I've come up to Cairns to support the doctors of Far North Queensland in their fight uh, against the Queensland government's dangerous pharmacy experiment. They have uh, indicated their shock uh, at hearing of this trial. Uh, they've indicated their despair that this is yet another attack on general practice. Uh, in, a, in our mind, general practice is right at the core of primary care. Uh, but it seems that the Queensland government doesn't share that view. One of the problems with this pilot is that it is secret and uh, once we found out what was in it, uh, all of the uh, doctors groups that were involved uh, pulled out straight away because they found it shocking that a government would be proposing such a dangerous trial. It involves the uh, diagnosis and treatment of 23 potentially complex conditions by community pharmacists in their pharmacy. Uh, it involves the, uh, the taking a, a patient through that process of uh, history, forming a diagnosis, deciding on a treatment plan, prescription of a medicine, which of course in a pharmacy model it's all going to be about uh, drugs, uh, and of course dispensing of that medication. We're asking potentially quite young pharmacists who've only done uh, some potentially online training or a short amount of specific training in order to participate in the trial, uh, for them to take on this task of diagnosis. The first risk is that you get the wrong diagnosis. Then of course treatment isn't always straightforward. It's not always a medication. Uh, in fact in many cases medications are the worst thing you can do for a whole series of health conditions. And some of the conditions that are able to be treated are conditions that are highly variable in their presentation. They can be mixed up for, for one another. And how on earth we expect a pharmacist to be able to cope with that complexity without the training, without the years and sometimes decades of experience that, that doctors bring. An example is a headache. I mean, most of the time a headache's a headache, but it could be a brain tumour, it could be meningitis, it could be a stroke, it could be all sorts of different things. It could be COVID. And somehow in a retail environment, a pharmacist is supposed to be able to achieve the right diagnosis and, and a treatment. Um, it, it just beggars belief and it flies in the face of uh, what we know is good medicine, People's health uh, is a complex interplay between uh, their social status, their, their history, their family, their work. Uh, there are many different uh, factors that go into it. And of course, here in North Queensland, that's even more apparent with uh, large and uh, medically needy uh, First Nations communities whose health is not about uh, a simple label and a medicine. Their, their management uh, of the most vulnerable people in our community is a complex thing and it needs to be managed by uh, teams of healthcare professionals working together, uh, teams that work in conjunction with local communities and are providing the healthcare that the communities actually want. What the Queensland Government needs to do is focus on the needs of its communities, understand their health needs uh, and then come up with uh, the solutions to those problems. It's not something that should be imposed from Brisbane uh, this is something that needs to be developed locally. I've seen in Yarrabah a model that has grown out of the community, a model that uh, incorporates the necessary healthcare workers, including not just doctors and nurses, but a pharmacist, Aboriginal healthcare workers, public health workers, and closely in collaboration with the hospital doctors that are involved in the care of that community too. That's a model that, that was inspiring uh, to me, and it's a model that the Queensland Government should be looking at. Healthcare is a team sport. We understand that as doctors. We cannot do our jobs without the assistance of many other types of health professional, including pharmacists. Pharmacists have a critical role in medicine safety. Uh, it's a well-established role in hospitals, and it's also a well-established part of our community pharmacy model. All the GPs I've spoken to respect and need their community pharmacists. They want to work in collaboration with their community pharmacists and in fact many doctors would love to have a closer relationship with their pharmacists to bring them into their practices. But that's where we need to see innovation. We need to see the health professions coming together into teams to look after the complex problems that our patients have rather than fragmenting and siloing care and setting up some kind of competitive tension uh, between the health professions. One of the problems with an experiment that starts here in Queensland is the fact that there's only one House of Parliament here and very quickly uh, we could see major changes to the, the regulation around our health system 
uh, slammed through the parliament here in Queensland, uh, only then to propagate around the rest of the country. Where, where this sort of experiment would actually be very difficult to run and very difficult to, to enshrine, enshrine in law. It's an example of the power of lobbyists uh, to influence governments uh, to the extent that they would put on a trial that many professional organisations are telling these governments will harm the health of their communities and yet they're still doing it. It is up to us as a medical profession to stand up to the government to say this is not right, it is not right for patients, it's not right for the vulnerable communities of North Queensland uh, and it is our responsibility to show the government a, a different path, a path that will actually improve health care uh, and a path that will involve better collaboration between doctors, pharmacists and all the other health professionals that are so critical to looking after the complex needs of our patient group.